Good morning, friends. In this part of my lecture, I shall be talking about structuralism and semiotics. First, we shall talk about the term structuralism. Originally, the word structuralism comes from linguistics. It was the Swiss linguist Ferdinand de Saussure who used the term structuralism in his study of language. And many of the ideas of this school of linguistics are borrowed in the field of literature and especially in literary criticism and theory. Structuralism in literary theory refers to a way of thinking about the world which predominantly is concerned with the perception and description of structures. Structuralism, as I said, is concerned with the perception and description of structures. In simple words, structuralism claims that the nature of every element in any given situation has no significance, no meaning by itself. Rather, it is determined by all other elements involved in that situation. So the significance of any element is determined by the other elements involved in that situation. Hence, the full significance of any entity cannot be perceived unless and until it is integrated into the structure of which it forms a part. So every element has its meaning, has its significance in relation to the other elements involved in that particular structure. So structuralists believe that all human activity is constructed it is not natural or essential. Hence, it is the system of organization that uh, these systems rather are important. So what we do exactly when we talk or when we construct something we select from the given choices and here you understand the syntagmatic and paradigmatic relations proposed by Ferdinand de Saussure. Syntagmatic relations how to be concerned with the ordering or the arrangement of the elements from the paradigmatic axis means a selection is made from the paradigmatic axis of the structure. So everything that we do is the systematic organization of these choices. And by this formulation, any activity from the actions of a narrative to not eating one's piece with a knife takes place within a system. Any story, any narrative takes place within a system of difference and has meaning only in its relation to other possible activity, activities within that system. Now you must be knowing something about the concept of binary apposition 
which I am going to talk about while referring to the key terms from the field of structuralism and semiotics. The major figures that contributed to this field were Claude Levi Strauss, A.J. Gramos, Jonathan Kuller, Rola Barth, Ferdinand de Saussure, Roman Jakobson, Vladimir Propp, and Terence Hawkes. Another related term to structuralism is semiology or semiotics. It is the science of science in simple words. Semiology proposes that a great diversity of our human actions and productions, our body, the buildings that we live in, all these convey shared meaning to members of a particular culture. Language is a shared system of symbols. So it is the same, means every social norm, every social behavior is an outcome of this shared system of signs. So we can analyze them as signs which function in diverse kind of signifying system. Uh, you are the students of linguistics as well. You have been studying language for a long period of time now since your undergraduation. Linguistics, which is the study of verbal sign structure is only one branch of semiotics, but supply the basic methods and terms which are used in the study of all other social science system. And the major figures of semiology include Charles Pierce, Ferdinand de Saussure, Michel Foucault, Umberto Eco, Gerard Janet and Rula Barth. Now let's try to understand some of the key terms from both the fields. The first important term that you should be familiar with while studying structuralism and semiology or semantics is binary opposition. Binary opposition refers to the pairs of mutually exclusive signifiers in a paradigm, a paradigm set where from where we make choices. This paradigm set represents categories which are logically opposed and which together define a complete universe of discourse. Now, language, for example, is a state of binary opposition. We understand linguistic sounds, linguistic signs, words, and their meaning in terms of this binary opposition. For example, we call a particular sound as per because it is not verb. So this is what binary opposition is. A man is man because he is not a woman. Now let's try to understand the difference between being alive and not alive. Alive and not alive are two opposite words. They are the examples of binary opposition. We understand the meaning of the term alive with reference to someone who is not alive. Or we understand the meaning of someone who is not alive with reference to the meaning of someone who is alive. Means we understand everything 
in such oppositions. Each term necessarily implies its opposite, and there is no middle term. That's what these structuralists believe. As I mentioned, a rose is rose because it is not a lotus. A flower is flower because it is not something else. So we understand everything in terms of these opposite relations between signs. Another important term is mythems, just like for names and mark names, the structuralist literary critics introduce the term mythems. The, uh, this term is developed by Claude Levi Strauss. As phonemes are the smallest components, uh, component parts of language, similarly, mythemes are the smallest component parts of a myth. By breaking up sounds into, sorry, language into sounds, we can understand language and its functioning. Similarly, by breaking up myths into mythemes, those structures, mythemes may be studied chronologically dichronically or synchronically or relationally as we do in the field of language we understand phonemes morphemes by uh, comparing them to other sounds or other words we can understand them historically uh, at the given time another important term is sign uh, which can be understood versus symbol by comparing it with symbol according to Saussure words are not symbols which correspond correspond to reference but rather are signs words are signs because symbols correspond correspond to reference reference are the things that we refer to when we use the word dog we refer to the particular animal that is a referent but according to Sasur, words are not symbols they are signs which are made up of two parts like two sides of a sheet of paper or two sides of coin a mark either written or spoken called a signifier two parts of and it is a kind of mark. It is writ either written or spoken. Means when I utter the sound P, that is a spoken sound. And when we write it, it becomes a letter. So a, a sign is made up of two parts, signifier and signified or concept signifier and a concept concept what is thought when the mark is made mark is the signifier and concept is the signified a mark is a written or spoken symbol or a sign whereas a concept is what is thought when thought when the mark is made when you utter a word you think something that is your concept and the actual utterance is a signifier. For example, when I say a rose, a rose is a signifier and what comes in your mind is a signified. So the, this distinction is important because Sashur contended that the relationship between signifier and signified is arbitrary. Means it cannot be explained in terms of logic. There is no logical relationship as such. The only way we can distinguish meaning is by difference. One sign or word differs from another. As I mentioned, per is per because it is not per. Or a rose is rose because it is not lotus. So this, the relational nature of language implied by a sure system rejects the concept that the word which is a sim uh, symbol correspond to an outside object or reference. Instead, meaning is the interpretation of a sign. Meaning can exist only in relationship with other signs. 
So Seldon and Widdowson use the sign system of traffic lights as an example to explain this point. For example, the color red in that system signifies stop. Even though there is no natural uh, bond between red and stop. So meaning is derived entirely through difference, a system of opposite and contrast. For example, referring back to the traffic lights, red's meaning depends on the fact that it is not green or not amber. So the meaning is when the green light is on, the vehicles uh, go, while the red, when the red light is shown, they stop. So this correlation is a kind of binary opposition. Another important term from the structuralist criticism is structuralist narratology. It is a form of uh, structuralism uh, proposed or espoused by Vladimir Propp, uh, Todd Rowell, Chapton, or uh, sorry, uh, I'm, I'm very sorry for the pronunciation. It is uh, Jelton Todrow, Rola Bar, and Gerard Janet. They, they illustrate how a story's meaning develops from its overall structure that is long. Long is the system of signs, underlying system of signs, whereas Barone is the actual use of that system. So they try to differentiate how stories meaning develops from its overall structure, Islam, rather than from each individual story's isolated team, not from Peru. So to understand text meaning, a narratologist emphasizes grammatical elements such as verb tenses and the relationship and configuration of figures of speech within the story. So this is how we can understand the term structuralism and semiotics in the field of literary criticism.